Hello, Keith Rucker here at MendisMachinery.org. Guys, today I'm working on another project, and uh, the project we got today is I'm, I'm needing to make a little insert uh, to fit into a chuck. This is actually a chuck that goes on a wood lathe. This particular chuck is a, a Nova, Supernova 2 uh, chuck, and it's a four jaw chuck, but it's a scroll type chuck. Uh, and it's made specifically for wood turning. Uh, this is a pretty common type of a chuck. A friend of mine uh, recently purchased a crescent lathe. Uh, it's an antique, old, older style lathe, uh, probably made in the 1950s, I'm guessing. And um, Unfortunately, the, the, the thread that's on the spindle on that lathe is a very unusual size. As it turns out, I have a very similar lathe made by the same company. It's not the exact model, but mine has the exact same thread that this other one is. It's an inch and an eighth, 10 threads per inch. Where that came from, I have no idea. That is not a standard size in any book, but uh, that was the thread size that they put on there. So when you buy a chuck like this, what you do is it has a pretty large uh, piece in there and you get an insert to make it adapt to whatever size spindle you have. Normally you just call them up and order the ones you want. Again, because it is such an unusual size, they don't make an insert that fits the chuck. Had the same problem when I got mine, uh, and no problem. I got a machine shop, we can fix that. So uh, what we're gonna be doing today, he actually purchased an insert from uh, Nova. It's a solid insert. We're gonna be machining it and putting the new threads, internal threads in here. And this is a 60 degree thread, inch and an eighth, 10 threads per inch. Let me uh, zoom you in over here. And I'll kind of show you exactly what we're gonna be doing and we'll get started on it. So this is the back side of that chuck that I was telling you about. This is, this is my personal one. And this is the insert that goes in mine. I can't remember, I think this is inch and a half outside diameter. I can't remember what the thread pitch is, really doesn't matter, I think it's eight. Uh, but like I said, this is the insert that I had for mine and that just threads it down to inch and an eighth, 10, which is what's in there. This is the piece we're gonna be making or modifying, I guess I should say. And uh, I've already got a blank insert. We just need to drill it and put the threads in there. Over here on the lathe now, this is the insert that he bought. He had this sent to me. It's already machined and has the outside thread on it. But as you can see, it's a solid body. We're gonna have to drill it and thread it. Uh, I've got it in my three jaw chuck because it's got a hex on here on this side. I did have to bump it around to get it to run true. Uh, it's, it's just gripping on a very small area here. We've got a very narrow area that we're gripping on. You know, I could, I guess, come in here and grip on top of these threads, but I'm a little reluctant to do that because because that'll um, mark those threads up and make it where it may not want to thread in as easily. So uh, ideally, I think it would have been best if you could have uh, done the internal threads first and then cut the external ones. If, if I was making it from a solid piece, uh, that's probably how I would have gone about doing it. But since we, this is what we got to work with, this is what we're working with. And uh, I'm gonna have to be a little bit careful, I think, not put too much tool pressure on things because if I start pressing on this too much, it's gonna move this thing around. And uh, because it is on such a narrow area, it's liable to not run true. I just bumped it around with my indicator. It's running within a thousandths of being true. And, and actually, I think it's probably a little bit better than that, but you can see you got some little partial threads in here. I think that's interfering with the uh, indicator. And it's got why that little bump is in there. It's about a thou, maybe not quite a thou but that's more than good enough uh, for what we're going to be doing. Let's uh, get over here. We're going to start drilling this thing out. I need to drill a one inch hole in there to start my internal threads on. I uh, did the math and figured it out. Again, that's an unusual thread size. It's not in any books, uh, but a one inch internal bore will be a good starting point for us to put that inch and an eighth, 10 thread in there. Start by uh, putting a center drill in here just to get that center spotted out where a drill can start. That should be good. Let me swap my drill bit out. We'll start with a quarter inch drill. First pass through, we're going in with a uh, quarter inch drill bit. And uh, again, I'm trying hard not to push this too fast or too hard. I'm just letting that drill bit do its work. I don't want to push that part off center in the chuck. And we're through. 
going to a half inch drill bit. That one's three. Now we drilled that with a three quarter inch drill the last pass. Uh, this will be going up to a one inch drill pit. This time I've got my speed slowed down. As we go larger in diameter, we slow it down. That is not good. All right, uh, let me, let's see about working on this drill bit or getting a new one. All right guys, so when we were using that drill bit just a while ago, it was not creating, it wasn't going down the center of the, of the uh, bore. I don't know what was going on. But what I gotta do now is true that up so that uh, we can get a drill bit to, to follow that. And what I'm gonna do is I got a boring bar set up here and we're just gonna come in here and basically recut that that little bit of an angle there that we started with that drill bit, get it trued up to the bore, trued up to the part. And then when we come in there with a different drill bit, it should line up and follow right down the center. That's the game plan anyway. All right, I think that pretty well has it has it cleaned up so uh i should be able to now put a drill bit on that and center up properly and i'm going to use a different drill bit this time i'm not sure what was going on with that one all right second uh second shot here i got a taper shank drill bit in here now this has got a uh, fresh grind on it and that looks like it's doing just what it's supposed to I think we are set up to do our internal threads. Uh, doing internal threads is a little bit different than doing external threads on the lathe. Uh, in, for all practical purposes, it's the same principle where we're gonna chase those threads out. But uh, the things that are different here is because we're, our cutter is gonna be moving toward us rather than away from us, we have the compound shifted over in this direction so that all of our cutting will be on this front edge so we want that front edge to lead in and be our cut. So uh, that's where we are there, um, 29 and a half degrees. And then when we go through our cut, we will uh, come out. So we'll feed in, we'll come out and then pull it back out. And I got a stop set here back at zero where we can just go back in there and uh, make our next cut. Set up on 10 threads per inch. Um, put a little oil on everything here. I'm going to chase this first one just uh, lightly and we'll make sure that we got the right thread pitch. So it'll go through. Again, I'm going to come out. I'll go back to my stop and we'll feed in from there. But before I do, I just want to real quickly get up in here with a, my thread pitch gauge and just make sure I'm on 10 and it looks like I am. All right, uh, I have an indicator set on here. According to the book, we need to go 65 thou. So uh, when we get down close to that, we'll start measuring it with a test piece that I've got. 
So, and um, again, just so everybody knows, I get this question all the time. How do I know when to engage this? The, there's, a, there's a lead screw on this that is timed with a chuck, and there's a little dial right here that has numbers on it. And because I'm doing an even number of threads, I can engage my feed on any one of the numbers on here, and I just manually wait for that number to come around to my line. As soon as it gets lined up, I engage it. So the half nuts come in on this uh, uh, lead screw. It goes down, cuts the thread, and then I disengage it uh, in the bottom. So uh, I'm looking down here to make sure I'm timed right with my thread. And with that, let's go ahead. We'll make about a five thou cut here. I'll wait for a number to come around down here on the lead screw. And in we go. And when we get at the bottom of our thread, I disengage, come out, come back to my stop, back to zero, and we'll make another five thou pass. And it's just rinse and repeat until we get down to uh, the depth we want to go. This is my date gauge I'm looking for. I get to that number, number one there. I engage, cut through my cut, disengage, come out, and we'll do it again. I'm going on one and three right now. Technically, I could do any number. watching my depth of cut here on the dial. Like I said, I need to go to 65 thou. We're at almost to 50. So we've only got about, what, 17 more thou to go here. Um, we'll go to about 60 and start making test fits. Just to make sure we don't overshoot our number. All right, here we go. Dial in a little bit more. As you get deeper in your cut, usually you want to lighten your cut up. Particularly when you got a uh, threading bar like this, you're going to have some uh, flex in it, some tool pressure. And uh, you want to kind of take that into consideration.
All right, we're at 60 on our depth. Book says 65. I'm just going to make a spring pass here. I'm not going to adjust it. This is just to take out any tool pressure that's in there. It's still making a cut just from uh, the tool pressure that was in that cut previously. I'm going to go ahead and pull that out. And this is a uh, test piece that I had cut previously to fit into my other piece. And you can see it's starting, but it's not quite going. We probably still got that full five to come out of there, but I'm going to sneak up on it. Make sure we got plenty of oil in there. So, um, See what we'll go about right here. We'll do two more passes there and do a test fit. Make a spring pass. Take another test fit here. And that's going a little bit farther. You know, still not quite there. I think I'm going to take it to the full 65. Again, according to the book, that's where it needs to be. We'll take a pass and a spring pass here. I'm going to take one more spring pass. there. It's just a little bit tight still. I'm going to probably uh, just take another thou out. It's darn, darn close. All right, let's take a couple of, take one pass and a spring pass. That's going to do it. But the check is right here. And that feels great. Nice. It's snug, but it turns easily. I think we got her done. And there you go. Just like that, we've got uh, that adapter threaded for inch and eighth tin on the inside. And the outside was came already cut. So uh, I have already taken it back there and tested it on my lathe spindle. It fits just fine there, as well as on the test piece. And it uh, looks like it's running true. So we're going to send this on back and uh, let him get it on his machine so that he can start using his wood lathe. And that's going to be a wrap, guys. Uh, like I said, we're going to get this in the mail, headed back to Stan, and he can uh, use it on his machine. I uh, thought you guys might enjoy seeing some internal threading over here on the metal lathe. Uh, not something that you do every day. I think I've probably shown it in some previous videos before, but it's been a while since I've done some. Good exercise. Guys, uh, that's going to be a wrap. But as always, uh, thanks for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Comments are appreciated, and uh, so are thumbs up. And with that, we'll catch you on the next video.